2 Samuel, chapter 18, verse 19. Absalom's dead. Then said to him that, the son of Zadok, we found him back in 1636. He's of the priest. Let me now run and bear the king tidings. How that the Lord has avenged him of his enemy. Let me go, let me tell him. Now these are what you call runners. They didn't have television, they didn't have telephones, they didn't have two-way radio. How they got information from the battlefront to the king, to commanders, was they would have men run. Uh, there's been many attacks, there's been radios, they've even used at one time, World War II, they used carrier pigeons. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. We're going to learn a little bit later what's going on here. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. Uh, you killed him. But you're not going because there's death. And the death is uh, the king's son. Then said Joab to Cushai, another man, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. So Ahimaaz is told, Don't go. Joab turns to Cushai, and we'll get this in a moment. He says, You go. Everything that you saw. Now, this is important that he says, Cushai, what you seen, because we're going to see that Ahimaaz is going to go run. Joab's going to allow him. And when Ahimehaz comes up to David, oh, I don't know what's going on. I just wanted to run. But Cushai, he was there. Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And Cushai bowed himself unto Joab and ran. You didn't walk. You ran. This was a hard job. Uh, the most thing that you would have, which was a slower movement, is would be the Pony Express of America. You had to get news or mail from one side of America to the other side of America. That's what this would be. This would be news. Um, Uriah became a runner with that letter that David wrote to Joab. Is the example. Then said to him, as the son of Zadok, he's a priest, yet again to Joab. But howsoever, let me, I pray thee, also run after Cushai. This guy's anxious. For whatever, he wants to go. And Joab said, Wherefore wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tiding ready? You don't have anything to say. You don't have no news. You have nothing to report. I'm not sending you. Shut up. If I can say that. But howsoever, said he, let me run. And he said unto him, run. <laughs> He's got Joab to the point, all right, just get out of here. Well, yeah, you ain't got nothing to say. You're only going to anger David. Go ahead. It's on your head. Then him has ran, came, ran by the way of the plain. It's plain ground. And overran, that's the only time that word shows up, overran Cushai. So the man that Joab sends, he's running to King David, and him that has, who has nothing to say, he passes Cushai. I want Cushai saying, what's he doing? I'm the one with the news, idiot. And David sat between the two gates. Now remember, he wanted to go to battle. And the people said, no, David, you stay here. You protect yourself. And the watchman, that's the first time that word shows up in the Bible. Watchman. Here's a guy, he's on the city gates, and he looks out. I don't know if they had any kind of binoculars or something. But if anybody were to approach any of the cities, that watchman would see them coming. And David's waiting for word. And he has set this watchman, you keep your eyes out. And the watchman went up to the roof. Is that not 2 Samuel chapter 11? David walked on the roof. It's not God. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. 
Whatsoever a man soweth that he shall also reap. Can you imagine that word roof hitting David's ears and that Solomon, I mean, not Solomon, that Absalom. And this was all because David did not go to battle and was on a roof. David is not in a battle again. And look at the word roof show up. And God's not working on David's heart. David. This is all because that little rooftop experience. And remember the people did not want him to go. But he's not where he's supposed to be. To the roof over the gate onto the wall. So this roof is, here's the gate of a city. And it's got bars and it's got the gates, it's locked. And up and over the gate is like a little bridge. It's part of the wall. And that is where the watchman is. He's, he's looking out over the gate, over the plain. And lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, a man running alone, all by himself. And the watchman cried. And told the king. And the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace, that's the first time that word shows up, and drew near. So here comes, guess who? Ahimanaz. What's he got to say? Nothing. And the watchman saw another man running. This would be Cushai. And the watchman called on, unto the porter. That's the first time that word shows up. And you'll find that in John chapter 10. To whom the porter opened it. Who, who is this porter? He's the guy who's at the gate. Who's he taking orders from? He's taking orders from the watchman. Mr. Porter. Yes, sir. This man can come into our city. Allow him. Open the gate for him. Someone comes knocking at the gate. The porter was saying, Mr. Watchman, who's knocking on the gates? Don't open it. I don't know who he is. I don't know. He has no business here. Okay. And that porter in John chapter 10 is the Holy Spirit. Not here, but I mean, that's who the porter is in John chapter 10. To whom the porter will open it? The sheep. That's an interesting word. The porter first shows up with a watchman and David. And the Antichrist type of has just been killed. And they got news. There's coming a time when Jesus Christ comes. And he comes for the nation of Israel. He's going to have word. The Antichrist is gone. The beast has been put into the lake of fire. Satan, the devil, has been put bound up for a thousand years. Let David the prince come and Jesus Christ, the king of the Jews, the king of the kings. The Lord of the Lords, let him come. And the poor is going to open up the city gates. And said, Behold, another man runneth alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Me thinketh. That's the first time that word shows. Me thinketh. Not very good English, but this is the Bible. It is being English. Me thinketh. So I guess the English teachers are wrong. The running of the foremost, the one that's the first, the first guy going to come is like the running of Jimenez. Now that's the priest, that's Zadok's son. He's the one that came to tell David, say, David, this is the council. This is what Absalom's going to do. We are sent by your friend. I forget what his name was. Get out of here, David. Run. This guy, he's got good news. Get out. The son of Zadok. Now watch this. Now this is the reason. And the king said, He is a good man, Ahimenaz, and cometh with good tidings. What now it looks like, why did not Joab send Ahimenaz? Well, one of two reasons. First, Ahimenaz didn't see nothing. We'll see that in a little bit. But it looks like tidings of the military could be that when the king heard that this man's coming, this man's good, he's got good news. King, I see this man coming. He gives a name. Oh, boy, that guy's got bad news. So we would always ask a question when I grew up was, do you want the good news or do you want the bad news? I got good and bad. Which one do you want first? It looks like, according to the Bible, the runnings of the men that came with the tidings, that man represented good or that man represented bad news. That's what it looks like. 
And him has the priest, he bringeth good news. What did he bring news with David before? Hey, here's the good news. You got to get going. You got to get out of here. This is to save your life. Absalom's coming. He's mounting up. I've got words to tell you. Leave. That's good news. That kept, the, that kept David alive. So here he is. He's, he's a good man. He's got good news. So David's like, all oh, right, good news. All right. And him has called and said unto the king, all is well. Is it? Your son is dead. And he fell down to the earth upon his head. He's worshiping David. He's the king. He's not worshiping David as a god. But is not Jesus Christ those going to fall down and worship Jesus Christ as God? Before the king is said, Blessed be the Lord thy God. David's with God. David honors the Lord. Which has delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my Lord the king. All right. As far as what he knows, we're in victory. We won the battle. That's good news. But there's other news. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? The only thing David cares about is Absalom. He doesn't, you know, how many of our men did we lose? Are our men okay? How's Joab doing? And him has answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, mm, you know, can we say that tongue in cheek? Because the only reason why Joab sent him because he kept aggravating him. Send me. No, I'm not going to send you. Come on, send me. All right, get out of here. So he kind of true. He got Joab's approval. Sent the king's servant and me, thy servant. There's another one coming. Okay. I saw a great tumult. I saw a great something. But I knew not what it was. Now remember back over here in verse 21. Then Joab said to Cushai, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And him as didn't see nothing. He just see what's going what's going on over here? What, what's everybody what's the can't see? Something's going on, I can't see it. And the king said unto him, Turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood there. He's obedient. And behold, Cushai came. And Cushai said, Tidings, my lord, the king. For the Lord has avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. That's not getting good news, is it? All. Who would be the all? Everybody was Absalom. Who else would be with the all? Absalom. Cushai has more information than the him has. And the king said to Cushai, Is the young man Absalom safe? That's all you care about, David? The man that has overthrown you. The man has caused you to go on the run. you got all these people to protect you. you got all these people who did not want you to go. you got Joab out there in the battlefield. And all you care about is that. He's going to get Joab mad in the next chapter. And Cushai answered, the enemies of my lord the king. Look how he answers David. Is Absalom okay? The enemies of my lord the king. Uh, Absalom's your enemy, buddy. And I would think he got a little offended at this. We went out to the battle for you, king, and you're worried about the enemy? So there's already the tension showing up. And all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, Absalom, be as that young man is. He's dead. And he does not tell that it was Joab that did it. Remember, he's hanging in a tree and Joab went with the darts. He says, all your enemies, including that young man. That's almost like a little sarcasm there. Well, how's Absalom doing? All of them are dead, including that young man. You didn't ask about Joab. You didn't ask about the soldiers. And the king was much moved. 
and went up to the chamber, that's a room, over the gate. He's back where the roof is. And where that roof that goes over the gate, there's a chamber. Are we not back in 2 Samuel 11? Where he left his bedchamber and he goes walking on the roof and all this sin began. He's back where he was in the beginning. And wept. Joseph does this. In Genesis 43, 30, he goes in his chamber and he weeps because he wants to yearn to tell his brethren, I'm Joseph. So he's like, goes there, no, I can't do it yet. I got to put these guys to a little test. Last time they took care of Rachel's son, they sold him. Let's see what he's going to do with Rachel's other son. When he goes in the chamber and he starts bawling. <laughs> These are my brothers. I love them so much. Kind of interesting. David's a verse. He's crying over one son. And wept. And as he went, thus he said. So he's, he's, on, he's walking. Maybe running. He, oh, my son Absalom. My son. My son Absalom. Would God I had died for thee. He's going he's gonna to kill you, David. Oh, Absalom, my son. My son. And that closes the chapter off. And you got the people, they're probably looking at David because they're going to see they're distraught. The king is crying over his enemy. The whole nation has protected him. We'll pick this up, Lord willing, in chapter 19. And he cares about the he cares about the enemy. And Joab's gonna get mad, Lord, Lord willing, we'll study in chapter 19. 